G'day team and welcome back to the channel. My name's Tony, this is the Mighty Overlander and I'm joined today by Phil the Mechanic. Mate, how are you? Fantastic, and that means we're down at Tokyo Motorsport and today's the first episode of the Mighty Overlander service series proudly brought to you by Tokyo Motorsport and the Modal Service Centre. Now, Phil's already completed the overall inspection. Certainly have. Of this vehicle and over the next few episodes we're going to bring to you the major components of a major service for a JB74 Suzuki Jimny. So first off, what are we gonna be doing today, mate? Mate, first thing straight off the bat is oil and filters. Oil, the lifeblood of the little engine in the uh, JB74, and filters, gotta make sure she breathes and does all the things that she needs to do. Outstanding. Now, as you guys know, whenever we're with Phil, Uncle Tony gets behind the camera, and I leave it up to the professional. So let's do that. Phil, it's all up to you, mate. No worries, leave it with me. All right, guys, I've done the inspection on Tony's Jiminy. Everything's looking not too bad under here considering how much punishment he puts the Jiminy through. Um, it's time to change the oil on the filter. Now, I've had a quick look around as part of the inspection to make sure there's no oil leaks. Um, I also like to dip the engine oil with the dipstick before I start to make sure the oil isn't low. This can also let us know if the engine is consuming any oil or if we have a hefty oil leak. Now, as part of the oil change uh, here at Tokyo Motorsports, uh, we like to use the Motul branded oils and lubricants. Um, good quality stuff straight out of France, and I use it from everything from daily drives all the way up to our top level motorsport cars. So we'll get the oil drainer out and uh, we'll drain the oil and get cracking. All right, guys, we'll uh, get cracking on draining this oil. So you need a 14 mil spanner. Here is the oil drain plug and the oil filter is just up above it. So luckily I'm on a hoist and I've got an oil drainer with me. You can do this on the ground. Oh. Undo this one. Just careful for any splash back when the oil drains out. Wind it out. Longest sump plug known to man. And there we go. And as you can see, that is black as sin, which means Tony hasn't been doing his oil changes. So we'll sort that out today, make sure that's all sorted. But um, this is the lifeblood of your car. So we've got to make sure we change the oil because oil will degrade over time and kilometers. And um, if the oil does get too bad, it means the engine will wear um, unnecessarily. So we'll drain this out. And as you can see, there's not a huge amount of oil in the Jiminy's. They have a very small oil capacity. And while that's draining, We'll get the oil filter removal tool and uh, pull the oil filter off as well. All right, guys, we'll get this oil filter out now. So while the sump plug is still removed, um, we're gonna remove the oil filter. Now, when you do the filter, it will drop down all over the top of the uh, front axle here and obviously the, uh, this one of the steering arms. I've got this lovely little bendy funnel that I use, which obviously tries to keep the oil splashed to a minimum so you're not having to do a heap of a cleanup. And then taking my oil filter removal tool, mine's a claw style one, up on the oil filter. Ah, oh, there we go, nice. Now this oil filter hasn't been over tightened, which is great, but um, some people do like to reef on them. And as you can see, it'll start to drip the oil out. Just a couple little turns just to get it going. Like that. And hopefully my little, uh, Funnel, perfect. Straight down the little funnel and into the drainer. So just be aware if you are doing this at home on the ground, um, get some rags in there and try and mop as, up up as much as possible. Now obviously having the oil drain out while you do the filter will um, allow a little bit more oil to come out of the sump because it'll move through the oil passageways out of the oil pump and back into the sump. So do leave it out when you take your filter off because you'll get maximum amount of um, old oil out of the car. So we'll let that drain. We'll spin the oil filter off. It's always good to have a bit of a rag because it is still full of engine oil, even when you pull it off. And um, it can make a bit of a mess. So I like to get a bit of a rag, just finish turning it off. Just make sure you've got a good hold of it, otherwise you'll end up covered in engine oil. Like that. I'll just allow that to drain. And the next port of call is just to give that filter face a wipe. Also, just pay attention, if you are using aftermarket oil filters on your Jiminy, um, they can leave the sealing rubber ring behind. So I have seen it on, uh, over the years where you pull an oil filter off and sometimes the, uh, the filter rubber seal stays behind 
and you go and put an oil filter on and then it leaks oil everywhere. So just pay attention to make sure that's off. You should have this nice clean ceiling ring here on the bottom half of the block and um, we're ready to put our new oil filter on. All right, got a new oil filter here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of fresh engine oil on the ceiling O-ring just there. Give this another little wipe. Now take your time getting, make sure the thread lines up. Like that. And when we tighten it, you just want to tighten it in with your hand. You don't want to use any tools. And once that's hand tight like that, that is on. So that is all sorted. You don't need to reef on them and do them up to high heaven because it's not going to make any difference and just makes it harder to remove. You can then get rid of this pan and I'll get some brake clean out and we'll give it a quick wash down. All right, the oil filter's all nice and clean and tight. Now I've got a brand new copper washer for the sump plug. Always replace them. I do not reuse them because you'll never get them to seal nicely again. And if you do, it'll just seal down and you have issues later on. So new washer all the way in. So it goes down finger tight. And then we get a spanner. All right, bam, your spanner. And then you just want to give it an eighth to a quarter of a turn. Doesn't need a huge amount, so it's nice and tight. Don't need to reef on them. Once again, just like anything, just do it up to the correct spec. Give that a bit of a wipe. Now, here, I like to use a paint pen and mark it, both that and the oil filter. Reason for this is, I know it's tight, I know it's done, and we're not gonna have any weirdness with filters or drain plugs falling out and killing engines. So it's just a nice visual representation that it's been done and correct. Also means if you're under the car, see any oil leaks or any weirdness, you can just eyeball that and know that they are still nice and tight until the next service. So oil and filters changed, let's head up into the engine bay and fill it up with oil. All right guys, so back in the engine bay. Now I just wanted to point out the oil that we're gonna be fitting to Tony's Jiminy. So we're gonna be using the Modal 8100 XS Gen 2. Now this is uh, the oil, meets the oil specification, sorry, for the Jiminy, which is this uh, A3B4. This is slightly thicker, it's a 540 versus the 530 that comes out standard in the JB74. Um, we're doing that just because of the little bit high Ks and the amount of sort of hard work that the Jiminy's doing. So a little bit thicker all up top is going to be perfectly fine for this one. So um, this meets all the standards that is recommended for the JB74, which is perfect for uh, the, any warranty stuff, especially with the guys that are still in their warranty period. So we'll uh, get this in and uh, fill her up. Uh, 3.6 litres in total and um, we'll be good to go. All right guys, oil's all in. Um, just be aware to check how much oil's going in the car. You don't want to overfill it. A, you're just gonna waste oil. It's just gonna spill it out through the rocker cover and into the breathers. Also, if it's super, super full, you might get some crank splashing and that's no good for the bearings and everything in the crank end. So, and that's on a extreme level. Now, um, on the side of the modal bottle here, there's uh, little level indicators so you can uh, get the oil uh, a correct amount of oil out of the bottle and into the engine. So just check it periodically and um, you should be fine. Now the last thing we need to do is obviously fire the engine up, which fills the engine oil uh, into the oil filter, and then we can turn it back off, let it rest for about 30 seconds to a minute, dip the engine oil, and we should be bang on the money. So we'll do that now. Okay guys, here we are under the Jiminy and we're going to be doing the gear oils. Now, um, I've already checked the gearbox and the transfer case. Um, now, as part of us chasing a little issue Tony's having with his gearbox, we've already changed those oils uh, before this service. Now, they take a 75W specific gear oil, um, which is quite thin, um, and that goes in those two components. But they're all good for the moment, so we're gonna concentrate on the front and rear diff oils. Now, um, here we are down the back with the rear diff. Um, we're gonna be changing these oils uh, now, they both usually take a 7585 gear oil. Now, um, we're going to be using something a little bit different here, uh, which is a 7590. And um, as always, here at Tokyo Motorsports, we use the Motul 
uh, lubricants. So uh, we'll be putting some uh, Motul Gear 300 in the front rear diffs. They take the exact same in, uh, gear oil and uh, we'll get cracking on draining those now. All right guys, we'll get stuck into draining this rear diff. So the filler is a square drive, so you can use a 3 8 ratchet to crack that plug there. So this is where we'll, later on we will fill the gear oil. Give that a crack. I always like to do the fillers first before the oil drainers. Cool. That oil isn't too bad. It's uh, still got a decent color to it, which is always a good sign. It means we're not getting any weird uh, issues with the rear diff eating itself alive if the oil was dead. Now, something that always happens, especially with your four wheel drive guys, is mud and debris in around the drain plugs. So it's uh, not a Jiminy specific thing, it happens a lot, even on my patrol and other four wheel drives I've worked on over the years. So you just gotta make sure, dig out all of the debris and the dirt before you go trying to crack that, that drain plug. Otherwise you're not gonna get your socket in there and it's just gonna be a hard time. So take your time, get all the debris out. And we'll be able to drain that now. Now it's a 17 mil for the drain plug. Oh, no, gonna have to give that a little bit more of a clean, but I'll get that all clean and we'll pull out the plug. All right, now we've got the debris out of the bottom of the diff. Crack that drain plug. 17 mil socket. We'll drain the rest of this oil. So the oil's draining out, it's actually really quite clean and tidy, which is a good sign. It means the diff isn't, uh, isn't uh, chewing itself to pieces and the oil doesn't have any water, which is another thing you need to be, uh, pay attention to, especially if you're doing any full driving in wet and muddy areas without um, diff breathers on there, which is obviously a good idea if you are getting right out into the mucky stuff. So uh, obviously a good sign there that it hasn't gone milky, uh, which means we can just do a normal, normal drain and refill without having to clean out the diff. All right guys, now that the diff is all drained, once again, replace the copper washer on the drain plug. We'll put that back in. Same rules apply with tightening. We just need, uh, just need to be tightened and nipped up. You don't need a reef on them to squish the washer out to high heaven. Now something to pay attention to is as well, is they run a nylon washer for their top. Um, now these ones you can reuse once or twice, but I wouldn't go too many. So just have a look, make sure it's not squashed or um, deformed anyway. If that's the case, you can reuse it and um, no issue. So we'll get to filling the diff up. I'll nip up this uh, lower bung and mark them both and uh, we'll finish it up. All right guys, fill this one up. Now we use uh, quite a bit of motor oil. So we've got it in a big six litre drum with a nice hand pump. Um, if you are doing it at home on the ground out of the smaller bottles, uh, the one litre bottles, you need something like a Tom Thumb pump or something on those lines to fill it up. Um, so I fill these up until they dribble out of the fill hole. And then I like to check the oils on the ground because they are a solid rear axle. The axle is drooped at this position on the hoist, but when it's on the ground, obviously it tucks back up into the body and then you'll need to just double check your oil levels to make sure you've got the correct amount of oil. So uh, trap there for new players. So I'll get pumping and we'll get this finished up. And that's it, oil's all in, drain plugs back in. Once the wheels are back on the Jiminy, it's back on the deck, I'll get under the car and just pop that fill plug out and recheck the level. And uh, once that's done, put the bung back in and paint mark it and she's good to go. All right, now we're done back here. Let's head up to the front and we'll get cracking there. All right, we're now at the front end of the Jiminy. We're gonna do the front uh, differential, exactly the same process as the rear. So um, remove the bung plug, then the bottom, Drain all the oil, make sure we don't have any water ingress, refit the bungs with new gaskets and refill the oil, exactly the same. So we'll get cracking.
That's the front and rear diffs done. Time to lower the Jiminy and uh, do those checks that I mentioned before. All right, guys, let's get stuck into changing these filters. Uh, first one we're going to do is the cabin filter. The car's on the ground, so it's easy to access. The cabin filter is located just behind the glove box here, and um, we'll show you how to pop that out now. Generally, just open the glove box up, and you'll lift from underneath and give it a good tug, and it will just pop clear, both sides. And once that's done, you can just slide it out of the way. Don't be uh, tempted to try and push the sides in and pull it past the actual trim. Um, you'll find you'll snap one of the tabs off the glove box. Okay guys, once the glove box is out of the way, you can see where the cabin filter lives. Just one tab on the left hand side here, pull the door back. Don't be uh, tempted to snap this little tab off. And as you can see, cabin filter lives just in here and this one is absolutely filthy. And here we have Tony's uh, cabin filter. How filthy is that? So the reason we change the cabin filter is it filters all of the air that comes through the front of the vehicle. It comes through the vents in the car. So when you've got the air con on, uh, this is the air that it goes through that system. So changing the cabin filters out, especially when you've been bush, as you can see, plenty of red dust in this one, or even just around town, um, especially before summertime um, and spring, catches all that pollen and garbage that comes through the car. So good idea to change this out regularly as per the service schedule. And here we have the replacement uh, cabin filter. As you can see, massive difference in brand new versus the one that's come out of Tony's car. So we'll get rid of that one. Now when these go back in, they do have a little arrow on the front of the air filter which tells you the direction of the airflow. So just pay attention to that when you remove the old one. All right guys, putting the cabin filter in slots back into the housing. Just remember to pay attention to the airflow. Oh. There we go. Just pay attention to the airflow direction. I've obviously wiped down the, uh, the cover of the housing as well and just around. Tony's is pretty filthy with the red dust from his adventures. And just like that, it's all back together. With the cabin filter now all in, all that's left to do is put the glove box back in. So just like the two tabs in, pull it up nice and high. You'll find the sections where the rear tabs slot back into the rest of the dash panel. It can be a touch tricky to get back in the hole. That's it, once in, two firm pushes, and she's done. Now that that's all finished, let's get down to the engine bay and have a look at that air filter. All right, we've got the bonnet popped, guys, and now in the engine bay. Um, as you can see, this is the air box where the air filter lives, and a um, couple of tabs that we've got to pull, and we'll change this air filter out. All right, guys, to access the air filter, two clips, one at the front and one here on the right-hand side, and then we're going to undo the hose clamp at the back to the air intake. Let's loosen that off. Lift the front of the air box lid, little pull, and there's the air filter. Let's see how dirty she is. Well, and as this is why we change our air filters. So plenty of red dust from Tony being out on the trails. As part of changing the air filter, especially on Tony's cars, you can see with the red dust in there, we're gonna clean the bottom half of the air box out. Something interesting to note while we're here is this tiny little drain hole right here. Um, now that's just to let any uh, water and whatnot um, come out of the air box. Be aware that um, even once you have a snorkel fitted, if you are doing water crossings, water can come up through the air box and just into the engine. So a little uh, tip there for the new players. Um, while we're here as well, we're gonna probably have a look down the intake to the throttle body, make sure no dirt and dust has got in there, and if so, give that a clean while we're here. Now I've taken the intake off of Tony's car to see the throttle body, and it is absolutely filthy. Um, not surprising considering the amount of uh, adventures he's getting on. So as part of the air filter change, as I said, we're gonna clean this throttle body out using a little bit of Carby Clean. Now, be aware that Carby Clean will chew paint. Um, it is pretty nasty stuff, so just be uh, careful when using it. What we're gonna do is to start off with is wipe the interior and the butterfly first to make sure we get any debris or dust out before we open the butterfly up and clean the, the butterfly throttle plate and just behind that as well. So we've got to give this a nice, good clean because the last thing we want is dirt and debris getting in the engine uh, with poor air filters. So take your time, keep it clean, and um, we'll get this one sorted out for Tony.
All right, guys, so we've got the intake hose back on. I've reconnected the uh, air temp sensor here. Um, just be aware that there's some little notches here on the, on the rubber intake tube that line up with the air box lid and also the throttle body. So once all that's back together, brand new air filter. Look at that, fresh as a daisy. Now there is a, um, a little tab at the front here which lines up in a notch in the air box. Um, this particular filter, it's foam side down. Lays in there quite nicely. Air box lid. So slide that onto the air intake pipe. Now be aware to line up that notch like I mentioned just before. Two tabs in at the back, which locate it. Seat it down nice and firm. Do up the two clips. Hose clamp as well. Now remember, don't over tighten your hose clamps. They just need to be down and secure and snug. They don't need to be super over tight. They will seal nicely for you. And that is the air filter all sorted. Righto team, there you have it. Thanks very much for joining us on this episode of the Mighty Overlander service series. And look, thanks very much, Phil. Mate, my pleasure. And if you need your JB74 serviced here in WA, pop down to see me, Phil the Mechanic, at Tokyo Motorsports, and we'll do our best. That's absolutely legendary. Look, thanks very much, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, share it with your mates, and we'll see you in the next episode.